The sound of sweet shells. Shells, sweet shells. Greetings, 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 and salutations, one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. This night we do a thing we call Marlon's favorite night shift show. Real Talk Wednesday. Happy hump day to you. Can you feel the music? Oh, fantastic. Can how are you? How are you? How are you? The sound of Shelly Sweet Shells in the background. No the track called One Love. Oh. Say big ups to each and everyone locked in right now. Those on Tune In Radio on the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew and all the affiliates all over the globe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So big ups to those on PEMGTV.com and those right here at the home of the night shift, KevinStew.com. Glad to have you. Couldn't do it without you. Wouldn't even try. to Marlon, host of Real Rockers, and if you haven't connected yet, go ahead and make a connection right now. Look up Real Rockers on social media, and just follow, or like. Marlon does a show from 7 to 10 several platforms. It's all about what? Having one love. Can you feel the music? One love, fantastic. I want to say thanks to Pulse Media Group for sponsoring this segment of the show. Everybody. When being in a moment is priceless, go ahead and give them a call. What kind of moment is a priceless moment? Any moment you can think of, whether you want to take photos or videos. Or you want to stream. Yep, they can do that. In fact, if you have a website, they can host it for you. If you want a website, they can create it for you. Pulsey Media Group. Seven five four nine 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 six zero two zero gets you in touch, or you can visit them at paulcmg.com. Let's let them know you heard about them right here on the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. How do you have that one love all over? How do you keep that one love? How do you maintain that one love? Does that one love change from person to person, from situation to situation? Seven seven three seven eight nine Stew gets you in touch. You can call. You can text. 
of course, are invited to jump into the stew pot. What is a stew pot? Others call it a chat room. We're very fancy over here on KevinStew.com. The stew pot is uh, uh, the interactive section of the website. Come on in. The water is always fine. It's where we keep things bubbling. Jump in. Come on. Let's communicate. Of course, the option is also there to call and text. 773-789-STU. 773-789-7839. And if you are overseas and can't just call or text, never fear. Because the option to Skype is there. Go ahead and uh, connect with me via Skype, Kevin.Stew. Real easy. Or you can search for me using my, my email at DJKevinStew at gmail.com. All right, so uh, let's get into this a little bit, why don't we? I know there are some people who have been waiting for this, especially the, 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 the person that asked the question. After my show last week, I, I got asked, uh, so what about the X? And, and I was like, what about the X? And the person said, you know, if should should someone who is married, you know, should their partner worry about them being friends with their ex and uh, to me it, it it seemed like you know if if they're friends why should there be a problem you know they're an ex for a reason but you know i started thinking about it a little bit i was like okay maybe i need to address this one on on a larger scale so i i i took the suggestion and here we go follow up to last week's show with being becoming that true friend asking that question should you be worried if your partner is friends with their ex no I'm not worried about it. <laughs> but that's just me. Few relationship questions are as polarizing as whether or not you should stay friends with an ex. For every person who tries to salvage the good and forget the bad, there's another would rather move on and never look back. Anecdotal evidence feeds arguments on both sides. But there are some experts. What exactly makes them experts? I guess because of the amount of people that listen to what they have to say, I guess. But whatever it is, they're considered to be experts. Nobody's more of an expert in my relationship than me. That's my take on it. But let's hear what some experts had to say. Rachel Sussman, a New York City-based psychotherapist and author of The Breakup Bible, advises caution when it comes to staying friends, but says there are couples from whom, for whom it works. Ultimately, she says, it's an individual determination. Nonetheless, there are some guidelines. All exes are, it is, suggest, it is suggested, all exes should follow these guidelines after a breakup. <laughs> now, we all know that one size doesn't fit all, right? So, let's see where... These guidelines will take us. When is it that you should cut ties with an ex? Good question, right? I think so too. 
under no circumstances should a relationship that was abusive, manipulative, or toxic transition into a friendship. Hmm. Sussman says eh, nothing. In in I guess in her opinion, it really doesn't matter what. It just should not transition into a friendship. But even if your relationship was generally healthy and simply did not work out, you might want to think twice before becoming pals. <laughs> One 2000 study found that friendships between exes were more likely to have negative qualities and less likely to, ha less likely to have positive ones than cross-sex platonic friendships. So, they're saying a man and a woman in a platonic friendship had more pro positive qualities than if they were in a relationship and then the relationship ended and they moved to a platonic relationship so the erotic relationship moved to platonic that may be especially true if you were never friends before you dated Sussman says if you had a really strong connection and a really strong love affair with a very erotic sex life how do you become friends with that person Chemistry doesn't always change. Sussman also says there are potential downsides to staying friendly with an ex. Sometimes that will hold you back from going into a new relationship. And she says, you know, there's even research to back it up. <laughs> Or you get into a new relationship and you tell your new girlfriend or boyfriend, my ex is one of my closest friends. That's complicated. Are you giving the new relationship a fair chance to really flourish or blossom? <laughs> well, my... My level of thinking when it comes to a question like that is a little bit different from most others. And this is why I'd love to hear from, from you guys. I'd love to hear what you have to say on the matter. If you don't want to call and you cannot text, or you cannot call and you don't want to text, to 773-789-7839. Go ahead and jump into the stew pot. And you can comment there. You, you don't have to put your name. You can remain anonymous. That's fine. Even if you call, you can be anonymous. Unless people know your voice, then it doesn't really make sense. But it's a judgment-free zone either way. Anybody that wants to cast judgment, don't come here. <laughs> uh, don't come here unless you can come here with an open mind with uh, intentions of having acceptance through enlightenment. That's, and that's the purpose of the show. Ashley, Ashley Brett, a psychology researcher in her late 20s, who asked to use a pseudonym to protect her identity knows that struggle that struggle pretty well after breaking up with her boyfriend of about a year and a half brett stayed friends with him and fell into an on again off again relationship that lasted for more than five years the friendship was never really separate from the previous romantic relationship. Red says it turned into 
the next cycle of a romantic relationship and then back into friendship. Though Brett says the relationship had enough upsides that she'd probably make the same mistake twice, quote unquote, she says she'd be hesitant to recommend the same to a friend or give that kind of advice to a therapy client. The largest drawback is being inhibited from new relationships and new experiences, Brett says. I closed myself off to other people and I didn't really want to open up to somebody again. And that's maybe not psychologically the healthiest orientation to life. Brett adds that repeatedly falling back on friendship allowed her to numb some of the pain of each breakup, which would seem like a good strategy, but can actually prevent future growth. One study published in 2013 in Plus One found that breakup distress may act as a catalyst for personal growth, while avoiding that distress may inhibit the development process. So, you can or you cannot. It depends on how it works out for you. So, you know, <laughs> Brett is saying that she wouldn't advise it. But let me ask this question. If you kept on going back to that person in a particular way, is it that you shouldn't have that kind of relationship with them? Or is it that you're just destined to have that kind of a relationship with them? Is it that you weren't understanding of how the relationship really works with you to the dynamics of your relationship? Is it that you didn't really understand yourself? Bum, bum, bum. You know, it, it might be counterproductive to ask that kind of question this early in the show because, you know, <laughs> that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to musical therapy at this point. But there's still more information and then it, that's something that I want you to keep in the back of your mind as we go through this entire show tonight. And I do want your opinions. I really do. Sussman says, exes who have kids together, they have children together, should try to remain on good terms if possible. That's a big if possible sometimes. Oof, boy, let me tell you, I have some stories. <laughs> Since they'll be in each other's lives pretty much for the long run, they, sh they should at least try. The lines are murkier for couples without children. But Sussman says those who dated when they were young were friends first, dated casually or were together only for a short time are good candidates for friendship. Robin Zabigalski, a 31-year-old writer who lives in Vermont, is a notable counterexample. She's happily married, but still maintains close friendships with several of her serious ex-partners, including her ex-husband and an ex-boyfriend she lived with for years after their breakup. It wasn't always that way. She goes on to say, Zabi, Zabi, Zabi Galski, that is. She goes on to say, I had burned all my relationships to the ground. And I was not really friends with any of my exes. But eventually, in pursuit of personal growth, she reached out to her ex-partners first to apologize for past transgressions mm -hmm. 
that's that's a good way to move forward then to try and reclaim the relationships they'd shared for years that's a huge chunk of my life that is kind of co-owned by this person she says i felt like those pieces of me were missing and the only way to reclaim those pieces of myself was to on their terms be like can we repair this relationship Zabigalski admits these friendships only work because her husband is inherently not jealous and because she's open about both her past relationships and current interactions with exes. She also says it's crucial to only pursue friendships with the romantic spark when when the romantic spark has completely faded for both parties. If you're staying friends and the real goal is to get back with them or to get them back, that's just continuing drama that you really don't need. The research supports that notion. Studies suggest that couples who remain in contact for the same reasons, whether those are pragmatic or sentimental, are more likely to have successful friendships while staying in touch because of unresolved romantic desires is a predictor of negative outcomes. No. Does that work for everybody? You know, is is that to say the individual that has unresolved romantic desires with an ex cannot be friends with them? So if they communicate well, the ex and the partner with the the individual in question not necessarily with each other you know if they communicate well with each other that 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 adds a whole different dynamic to the whole thing but so the individual and their partner have good communication and the individual and their ex who is their friend have good communication and the individual is open and honest and true to themselves would there be an issue there's a way that is suggested that you can stay friendly with an ex and we're going to take a break before we get into that. But, you know, I, 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 it, it's, it's something that you want to consider looking at all the, the angles of it. If, if you'd so, if there's another way to put it, you know, you, you, painting it with a broad brush might be a little bit difficult. If you're going to approach the question with an open mind and argue all angles. Because typically, we tend to approach things from one direction. Whatever the direction it is that you know. Whether it is that that was the experience that you had or that was what you're taught culturally. But you can only go from what you know. Think about it from an angle which you're not really familiar with and see if that would make any kind of a difference. You don't have to adopt that philosophy. I'm just saying, think about it in 
and you want to think about it in an effort to understand where someone else might be coming from. We're looking at the ex-friend, not the friend who used to be a friend, but the ex-partner who is now a friend. And one of the questions we want answered is, should your partner be concerned, be worried that you are friends with your ex? It, it could make or break your relationship. As the night progresses, we'll see what experts, quote unquote, <laughs> have to say about it. Call a friend, tell a friend, we're on Real Talk or a.k.a. Marlon's favorite night shift show. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we talk some more, yeah? Stick around. And if you go away, bring back somebody with you. Pulse Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us, 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us 754-999-6020. AdShare TV, part of Pulse Immediately. Are you crazy about the music industry? You aspire to hit it big in music? Or maybe you've sweated out a soulful killer beat and are now stuck finding it's not as easy as it looked. Oh, but it can be easy for you with JTMC. We've been there, we know how it feels. So we solve challenges like production, promotion, marketing, branding and development, and more. With over 30 years of experience, JTMC is a one-stop shop for artists. We handle your graphic design, writing services, PR, as well as event planning, e-blasts, artist management and bookings, so also your website and social media needs as well. We're experts in using creativity to persuade audiences on behalf of artists, drawing on our diverse experience to create projects that connect with audiences intellectually and emotionally. Artist success is everything to us, and our years of experience and commitment will be behind you for every one of your needs. If you've got music for the world to hear, whether you're a new or established artist, visit us at jtmcenterprise.com. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, in math, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, in biology, I learned that I'm pathetic that I'm fat, and a joke. And in history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. It takes an entire village to raise a child. Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about Palace. 
Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, Palace has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 U.S. dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace, preserving young minds for posterity. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind, and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Hi, this is Caramanti and you're listening to DJ Kevin Stew and this is The Night Shift. the show in the background the sound of Royce a track called If I Love You I never told you I love you I do I never told you I never told you I love you I do I never told you Thank you. 
I want to say thanks to our sponsor for this segment of the show. Big ups to Healing Heavenly Hands. Thank you, Althea. Althea is a licensed massage therapist that operates out of Broad County. But never fear. If you're in North Miami, Deed, South Palm Beach County, she'll come to you there too. Yeah, let me mention she comes to you. Just give her a call, 954-655-9000. Or you can email her at theolator at att.net. She only has one request. When she's finished massaging you, you get off the table. And go to your comfy spot so that she can go. sound of Royce if I loved you if I loved you you would know and um, (laughs) there was a time you know I'll I'll tell you this there was a time that if I felt a certain way about someone and I didn't see where it was beneficial for, for me to tell them they wouldn't know. What I have found is that that doesn't work well for me. I don't know about anybody else, but just for me. So, if I really care about you, I'm letting, and it may sound weird to some, I'm going to let you know, but I'm not letting you know for you. I'm letting you know for me. If I don't care for you, I'm telling you for me. Because at the end of the day, I need to look out for me so that I can provide to you the best possible me. It's kind of why you go on planes and they go through the safety measures and they get to the part of, well, you know, if we lose pressure inside the cabin, from the ceiling they'll drop down these masks. Put yours on first before you put your, if, if there's anyone that is traveling with you that would need your help. Well, you do that so that you're in a position to help them. It's not because you don't care about what will happen to them. Because you care about what will happen to them, you need to make sure that you are in a position to help them. It's the same thing. That That's how I see it anyway. You might see it a little bit differently. And that is fine. I'm cool with that. I just want to hear, you know, how you see it. 773-789-STU gets you in touch. 773-789-7839. You can call, you can text, you can connect through Skype, kevin.stu, or use my email, djkevinstu at gmail.com. And of course, the interactive portal on kevinstu.com is always available. It's called the Stew Pot. Others call it a chat room, but we're fancy over here. We call it the Stew Pot. Come on in, the water is always fine. It's where we keep things bubbling. How do you stay friendly with an ex? Is there a, a particular formula that you can apply? Is there a, a, a system that you must follow? A guideline that applies to all situations? I don't think there is. But experts say there's a particular way you should go about it. If you decide to try a friendship with an ex... Sussman, things in my mouth here. Excuse me. <laughs> Sussman suggests taking a break first. She says, "I'm quite suspect of those couples that break up and then say right away that they're best friends." Time heals. A lot of insight can come with time and space apart. That goes for social media as well, as in person. 
She says, I would love for couples to unfollow and unfriend each other for a few months after a breakup. Otherwise, before you know it, you're checking your Instagram and you're seeing your ex. And that brings up all sorts of thoughts and feelings which might make you on some emotional level feel reconnected to that person. Boundaries are also important for couples turned friends. Though they'll likely look different for everyone, it's recommended that they're set. A healthy boundary could look like Let's not talk every day. Let's not text every day. Every couple of months, let's grab a meal or see a movie. But let's not have regular daily contact. Above all, regularly reassess how the friendship makes you feel. And be honest with yourself. More times than not, Someone who stays friends with an ex is kind of clinging to something. It's more of a security blanket, so to speak. And if that's the case, it may be healthier to just let the friendship go. Even if it hurts in the moment. Now, do you see it that way? Or do you ask the question, hey, you know, can I be friends with an ex? And to even take it a little bit further, can I be a friend with an ex after I've gotten married? It it, it could seem one way when you're looking at it as just moving from this relationship and starting another relationship versus moving from this relationship and starting a marriage. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it may be looked at differently, but what is a marriage? If not the same type of relationship, but with different perks? And anybody disagree with that definition of a marriage? <laughs> Being friends with an ex is tricky business. We we know that. We've been talking about that since the beginning of the show. If someone was a big part of your life, it is natural you'd want to keep a connection with them. But there may be unresolved or confusing feelings. And once you're in a new relationship things get a little bit more complicated. But can you still be friends with an ex once you've gotten married? Or does marriage draw a line in the sand? No. <laughs> as, as, as I was going to say, it really depends on what you define marriage as. But I'll... I'll hold on to that for a moment. So pretend I didn't even bring it up as a thought. The truth is, when it comes to things like these, marriage should not be a deal breaker. If you had a healthy friendship with your ex when you were in a serious relationship, the fact that you're saying vows should not change that. It's less to do with your marital status and more to do with your individual situation. The ex, your partner, you. Sometimes being friends with an ex is totally natural. Either you dated a long time ago or your, your relationship was, was, was never that serious. So it was an easy transition. But emotions are complicated. And often the situation is a lot more ambiguous. And what marriage might do 
is give you the motivation to decide if this friendship is working. And that will settle it once and for all. If you're feeling on the fence about being friends with an ex, there are some things that you should con- it is recommended that you consider. One of them being, are you and your friends actually, you and your ex actually friends? A lot of people who are quote unquote friends with an ex are not actually friends. If you were friends with this person long before you met your current partner and there were no romantic hangovers, you probably are genuinely friends. But if they randomly text you and want to meet up for drinks after months of or years of not communicating, that can be a little bit more suspicious. If you're just people who occasionally show up in each other's lives and confuse things, that's not a real friendship either, by definition. And you probably want to cut those ties. Now... If that kind of relationship is actually what works for you, though, it may not necessarily be a good thing to cut those ties. But I'm not one of those experts that is, is, is giving this advice. I'm just tossing things out there that may disrupt your norm a little bit in order to get you thinking. If you feel yourself drawn to this person, but you see it's not a genuine friendship. You may want to consider if everything is going smoothly in your relationship or if you're trying to get some of your emotional need met, needs met elsewhere. When you're looking at being friends, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're talking about being close friends. It it doesn't mean, hey, this is my, my BFF. Just because you're friends with an ex doesn't mean they have to dance at your wedding. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 it can just mean you're social media friends or you exchange birthday texts. Maybe you should even meet up for coffee every now and then. But there are lots of ways that you can be friends with your ex without it being too intimate or making your current partner feel weird. Maybe the question is, why is your current partner feeling weird? Is it because your relationship with your ex or is it just something within them that is causing that? Would it be different if they didn't know that the person you're friends with is an ex? And if it is if it makes a bit of a difference, then is it really the relationship with the ex that is the issue? These are the kind of questions that I ask. <laughs> because like I said, I look at things a little bit differently. But it doesn't mean that I do not know what it is like to look at things the way that is considered the norm. I guess I could say I was normal once too. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to offend anybody or to make anybody feel some quote-unquote type of way. <laughs> Why would you want to be friends with your ex though? If you weren't close friends before, why would you want to be friends with them now? Wouldn't cutting them off be a little bit easier? You need to think of your whole social situation when you ask questions like those. If you have a lot of friends in common, if they know your family, or if you regularly run into each other, it's just not useful to have bad blood between you. Instead, talk to your partner and explain that this person is a part of your life, whether you like it or not. 
then work together to find the best way to move forward. Not to say you're saying to them whether they like it or not, this person is in, in your life. You're saying whether you like it, the individual like it or not, they're in your life. Sometimes it, it's, that is the situation. That's just how it goes. And that may not necessarily be such a horrible thing either. Talking to your partner is an important point. Now, there probably shouldn't be a partner if you haven't had the opportunity to be able to be open with them. If you cannot communicate openly with them and honestly, then your relationship probably needs some work. That's not the experts talking. That's just my opinion. Talking to your partner is an important point. If you have a friendship with your ex, whether it's a close friendship or a distant friendship, whichever way you would determine it to be, you need to be completely transparent with your current spouse. Ideally, you would have done that kind of thing in the beginning. You'd have laid that out as a part of the, 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 the ground rules or whatever agreements that you have about your relationship. They don't want to find out after the fact that the guest who got too drunk at the wedding was actually someone you used to hook up with. And you definitely don't want them to hear it from someone else. Be honest about the previous relationship and the current friendship and consult with them about how you both feel things should be handled going forward. Your marriage is going to be your priority. Typically, the person that you are with now is high up on the totem pole. The only relationship that is higher than that needs to be the relationship with yourself. That is not there, but I like to slip that in because more often than not, we leave ourselves out of the equation. If you're not happy with yourself, the person that you're with isn't going to be happy with you. Because... You won't be giving them the due justice. You know, you're not, you, you wouldn't be giving the relationship a fair fight. Because you're not being fair. You're not being honest with yourself. So you're not being honest with the person that you're in a relationship with. At the beginning of this show, one of the things I mentioned is that there's no one size fits all. I'm being very general with the information that I'm presenting to you. That's intentional. I'm tossing some things out there that is, is a bit beyond the norm. Because the norm may not necessarily be the best way. We we already know it's not the only way. So it doesn't hurt to consider what may not be considered the norm. Yeah? And you take bits and pieces of what is out there that can work for you. And you look at that. And then you don't just apply it. You trial and error it. <laughs> you try it. See if it works, see if it doesn't work, and the pieces that don't work, you make adjustments. Life is about making adjustments. Because if you just stick to one way and be rigid, your life is going to fall apart. But, of course, that's just my opinion also. 
and yes i i say that a lot in real talk that it is my opinion because real talk is pretty much that a lot of my opinions <laughs> but it it is mixed in with a lot of information provided by someone else or other people here's the thing about that it's also their opinions the question is what are you taking to make your opinion we're gonna take another quick little break when we come back we're gonna talk some more it's a night shift with dj kevin stew it's real talk wednesday is the end of the night shift week call a friend tell a friend we're looking at the ex friend being the friend that is an ex how does that work how does that work with you how does that work with your current partner how does that work with your spouse should your spouse be worried that your friend is your ex all these questions we're looking at tonight and seeing what kind of answers we can come up with we'll be right back when being in the moment is priceless consider the ability to share that moment if you can video it you can broadcast it and pulse e-media group has the tools you need weddings birthdays funerals graduations church services parties seminars you name it pulse e-media group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse Emedia Group, when being in the moment is priceless. I'm in almost every school bus in class. They see me around the neighborhood and they tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me. We are Feeding America, brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. JTMC Music presents the highly anticipated, much talked about, the Juggling Rhythm Volume 1. This classic rhythm takes on a new life with tracks from both established artists and introduces some incredible new voices. Get your dancing shoes ready with the Juggling Rhythm, featuring international reggae dancehall artist Missa Vegas, alongside Ian Sweetness, Ed Robinson, Jack Raddix, Hezron, Dangling, Joanna Marie featuring Galaxy P, Denny Ranks, Featuring Jawiz, Ambalik, Christine Alicia, Yishka, also the new sensations on the rhythm. Seal, Danger Lee, Marquis Skelenar, Zachary. Available on all digital media outlets. The juggling rhythm. Get it, get it, get it. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. I am representing for DJ Kevin Stew working on the night shift in the night shift radio show won't go changing like the weather Just to please the devil never Will DJ Kevin's true sell his soul? That's a word and honor It's Christine to represent him Word and honor Celestia DJ Kevin's true
son of the terrific one. Twiggy. The track is called Friends. You can always count on me. Want to say thanks to JTMC for sponsoring this segment of the show. And uh, there are changes coming to JTMC if you go to the website now. Uh, don't worry. It's not that you typed something wrong. Yes, changes are on the way. They've already started taking shape. They start getting familiar with Reggae Global. Site is that you may ask jtmcenterprise.com. No contact number remains the same though 954 954-998-8034 954-998-8034 You know, in the midst of all of this, you really have to know what a friend is. And Twiggy describes it beautifully in this song, you know, through thick and thin, I'll be your friend, through stormy weather. It's not going to be all rose petals, but it will be all roses. You're confused by that? All right. Let me let me explain it. Let me break it down for the newbies. Roses have thorns. So, in the midst of getting this beautiful flower, there comes a stem, which, when you look at it, there is beauty in the thorns that that are on the stem of a rose but understand that beauty can inflict some serious pain so yeah it won't always be the pleasant smelling petals and the delight the delightful colors and the beautiful perfect way that they form this flower understand that there are some thorns that are a part of this that completes it so there is some discomfort in in the midst of it all and that is fine there's nothing wrong with that so it's not all rose petals, but it is all roses. Your marriage, when it comes to your relationships, is going to be your priority. And if you're not married, it is that partner that you have. That is pretty much your priority. If your ex is not an important part of your life, there's no point in jeopardizing your marriage just to keep up a tenuous friendship. You need to take your partner's feelings into consideration every step of the way. They are the ones that is it, they're going to be there for you, hopefully, through it all. There's one caveat, however. If you have a part a partner who is really threatened by you being in contact with your ex, 
that can be a red flag. If you genuinely have just a platonic relationship with this friend and you have been friends for a long time, your new partner should respect the fact that they're a part of your life. If they cannot handle any ex-partners or old hookups being on the scene, you might want to ask yourself if there's a bigger control issue at play. Yeah, I did say control issue. Being friends with an ex can be choppy waters to navigate. Nobody says it, it, it's smooth sailing. And that is whether you're married or not. But marriage might be a good time to evaluate any confusing friendships and decide whether they are genuine and whether they are worth it. Not, I would go on to say, before you get into the marriage, before you say the vows, if, if, you're, if you're planning that wedding, it might be a good idea to factor in exes and and friends and how you're going to navigate that moving forward keep in mind how much this person means to you and how big of a role they've played in your life then talk to your partner and above all remember 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 honesty is key it's not always the easiest. I can tell you that. Um, straight up, I can, I, I, from personal experience, it may not be the easiest thing to do. But after you've done it, it changes your life in ways that you probably wouldn't have even imagined. It's, it's like starting a new relationship. Now, there are some experts that would say if you choose to avoid being friends with your ex, then there's some denial at play. Yeah, if you're avoiding it, there could be some denial that is involved somewhere along the line romantic love is like it or not going to come to an end at some point the theory goes that relationships end because the love ends meaning that one or both members of the couple fall out of love <laughs> The reasons why they fall out of love, well, that also varies. While some people's careers and professional obligations may draw them away from their relationships, others experience betrayal. They can't get over for whatever reason, or they can't move past that bit of betrayal. Whatever the betrayal is. Some lovers simply change and grow apart, realizing they were not meant to be together. One of the most perplexing realities is what often comes with divorce. Most have probably had the experiences, experience of witnessing the forced encounter of two people who were once married, but who seem to have almost no connection to each other. And, you know, the, the question would come up, you know, were you ever really married? When you look at people like that, you have to ask. Many good songwriters have captured the <laughs> melancholia and mystery that sometimes comes with the demise of a romantic union. You know, Carly Simon um, has a song, Come Around Again, in which she sings, 
uh, so good on paper, so romantic, but so bewildering. When a relationship goes south and a couple decides to separate, what happens to the love? Does it really die? And based on clinical work, it is found that love never truly dies. No matter what came between the two individuals, the love never really dies. Well, if it's true love, anyway. It seems more likely that the love remains, but is repressed. And when you see two people who don't treat each other as strangers, but who were once married, well, they treat each other like they were strangers, but they were once married. You don't see the love on the surface. But make no mistake, it is there. It is just repressed. You see the manifestation of the anger, sadness, or denial, but it covers strong feelings underneath. We can't simply love someone day after day and truly stop loving that person. That doesn't work. You surrender to denial if you can't accept that, there's a, that there is a part of you that still loves and misses that person. Even if it's only a minuscule part of you, it's still a part of you. Music comes to mind again. And you, you, you can think of Whitney doing her rendition. And if somebody loves you, won't they always love you? You hear those words coming out. And the answer to that question is, is, is yes. Though some will go to the grave just denying it. Now it is rare that couples are able to hold on to a friendship and remain close while moving on after the divorce. And it is pre pretty much impressive when you see couples who manage to stay friends as it takes strength in character and in understanding of the bigger picture to rise above the hurt. I know people who are exes and to see them interact, you'd be like, what? Why are they exes? If you look back in, in, in the archives, I did a show with uh, two friends that are called the Sexy Exes. And, and, and they're G. Wright and, and David Muir. And yeah, I can call their names because... They should be the poster. This 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 relationship should be the the, the model to aspire toward. <laughs> and I, I I say that with no reservation. They have grown children together. They are friends in the truest sense of the word. You know, one would have uh, an engagement out of town and the other is accompanying them to the engagement because they're driving. And they would meet up, they would hang out, they would, and just listening to them talk and they, they would do events together and and it's not to say that they don't have their own relationships. Oh, they, they do. But that right there, that for me, when I grow up, I want to be like that. And, you know, looking at it on the surface, you'd go, that is crazy. And to hear what they have gone through to get to where they are, you'd be like, this is fairy tale. They made this up. They're acting. Go back and check it out. The sexy exes. 
but that why why can't we all be like that i am friends with uh, a lot of my exes i'm i and i've said it in 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 closed circles i'll say it right here it because it's true i'm friends with a, a number of my exes it's, it's probably three or four that i'm not friends with we started out as friends the relationship went to something else that something else for whatever reason isn't anymore i i, I thought that it was only natural to go back to being friends and for me it 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 shows that we were actually friends because over time we managed to maintain that contact and that kind of friendship so it can be done and i believe that it is it happens because that love that is mentioned is is more of a pure love than a heated fireworks kind of love because the heat will burn out the fireworks will burn die out you know the splendor of it will go away so that is the kind of thing that 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 as i started this this final section right here talking about you know the, that divorcing that that love that went away that falling out of love i don't really think you fell out of love i just think that there are other things that happened that makes it evident that you just don't work together and it is fine but don't beat up the other person about it don't beat up yourself about it you want to be mature enough to have discussions about it and if your partner is threatened you know that's a problem and it could very well be that the problem is not with you and the relationship that you have with your friend the problem is with your partner and how they see themselves which is why they're catching grief or you are catching grief about your relationship with your friend but don't get it twisted you may have contributed to your partner having issues because either you weren't open and honest before or you're not open and honest no either way you're a contributing factor or maybe the person before you was a contributing factor it is not the end of the world it can either be fixed or you can move on to something else but it's not the end of the world and i think that would be the bottom line you know nothing is <laughs> it doesn't make it the end it just makes it the end of this particular time or this particular situation does that make sense i hope it makes sense for you because the fact that it makes sense in my head may not necessarily be such a wonderful thing <laughs> this is g cole love cannot be gained the track is called What Love Is. Illusion. Love is not just a dream that's built on illusion. It's more than something to feel. You can take.
taste it and touch it, it's real. Just the night of moment of fire. It's a more than hunger inside that builds on desire. probably get in trouble for this one. Bim Lewis and Clover. Check called Sweetheart. My sweetheart feel that you should be our friend Because she has to help you now and then And she cannot understand
trouble, trouble, trouble. Remember if you this me, you have a good this, my man, too. Remember if you want me, you have a war with my man, too. This is Ikea. It's called Relationship 101. Say me love me, I will make it work. The two are we are provide. One thing me know, good man a good man, good man a good man, it's hard to find a leg go. But if you want it for work, just put in the effort, want on the tree and make it go. So me just ease in myself, in my man's face, do the right thing, put a smile on the face. Some girl confused and I know them place. Can't study man, my girl, you will fear. Robinson. Strange is the way 
to say thanks to GMAP Music Solutions for sponsoring this segment of the show. This segment is called Musical Therapy. GMAP Music Solutions providing sound, lighting, and stage production services, musicians, singers, engineers, DJs, bands, PA systems. Give them a call, 754-307-GMAC, that's 754-307-4622, or visit them at gmacmusicsolutions.com. GMAC, they bring your event to life. Xavier Ward working out with Skip Marley. With me is where you reside. It's called All I Am. I feel just like going when I lie with you. Whenever you can't take the pressure, it can be whatever. I got you to it all. When you hurt and you know I feel it first, it's so blessing and it. Reset. It's called I'm Fire, You Are Water.
Alexis Chapel. I know it's you. Young lady heals out of Texas. Now, I'll be coming for you when the Recently became a mommy. The baby is what, three days old? The track is called Make You Mine. It's called This Is The Love. She told me to 
King Charles. The track is called Juice. From the album Sim Still Searching. If you want to. If you want to, you can be my queen and I will be your king forever. It's the time of year, right? Uh, yep, Thanksgiving is gone. Although, I give thanks every day. It's approaching that time that we know as Christmas. New music here from Naya Blue. It's called Little Drummer Girl.
thank you all for tuning in. Not just tonight, but this week. I encourage you to look out for members of your community. And your community is not just the development that you live in. It spreads far and wide and it goes beyond that. The people that you pass on the bus, on the plane, on the boat, on the train, whether you walk, ride or drive. These are members of your community. Do something good for them today because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. My name is DJ Kevin Stu. This is how I like to do it to you, for you, and with you every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday right here on KevinStew.com from 10 to midnight Eastern. You're guaranteed to find me here unless something extreme happens. Please, 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 please take care of each other. Each other is all we have. This is Hope Dunn Lindo. It's called This Season. y'all to check out Melissa latest song sorry she doesn't go by that moniker anymore Melissa Jane my sister from another mister check her out on melissajane.com tomorrow from 9 to 10 eastern time live and in living color As you go into the weekend, well, a strong end, depending on how you look at it. Be good. But if you can't be good, go ahead and be good at it. Catch you again on Monday. Community and finance. Y'all take care, okay? Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. From here in South Florida. Good night. Families and friends. Yes, this the season. Christmas time again. So love without reason. Families and friends. Consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse eMedia Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse eMedia Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse Media Group, when being in the moment, is priceless.